Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this Adobe Premiere Pro CC tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a smooth zoom out transition rather than in. So I've got a couple clips on the timeline, and this is very similar, almost the same as the smooth zoom in tutorial I made. So I'll link that below as well and after. But instead, we want to zoom out of this clip into the next one. So to start, let's kind of reverse the process. So let's go to the project media bin. Let's go to file, new, adjustment layer, and let's drag an adjustment layer in between these two clips. Next, let's just drag another adjustment layer in between the two. So now that we have two adjustment layers stacked on top of each other, I'm going to pull this one so it starts only at the cut. And then for duration and timing purposes, let's actually mark over to the cut. And you can usually do this by pressing up and down on your keyboard to jump directly to cuts. And let's go one, two, three, four, five, six frames to the right. This is just a good general default length. All right, so I'll chop off the rest of that adjustment layer. And let's go back to that cut and let's go one, two, three, four, five, six to the left. So we're even on both sides here. Now this is what it looks like for the zoom in, but for the zoom out, let's take this adjustment layer and move it to the first or starting clip because that's gonna be the one that's zooming out. Next, we wanna add a couple effects on these adjustment layers. So let's head over to the effects panel on the right hand side and let's search for one called replicate. You should also find this in the stylize video effects folder. So click and drag this replicate effect onto this bottom half adjustment layer. That'll separate the clip out so that we can zoom out of it. But we wanna turn the count up to three. That way we have a nice solid frame in the center. Next, we wanna to go to the mirror effect so we can get rid of all these harsh lines. So let's go to mirror and drag this mirror effect on this adjustment layer as well. Now we're gonna create a couple different angles of reflection to get rid of each of these lines. So one, two, three, four actually. So for the first one, reflection angle zero, we can keep it at that and then move the X position over until it meets that exact line and you can't see anything anymore. If you want a number, this is gonna be 1280, so 1280, just type that in. Next, let's click and drag another mirror effect on there, except this time, change the reflection angle to 90 degrees. And then for the reflection center, move the X position to 719 and it'll meet this bottom line and make it disappear. Now we're gonna do this two more times for the remaining two lines. Except this time, let's make the reflection angle negative 90 and then move the X position until it covers that next reflection angle. The number for that should be 360. Lastly, let's add one more mirror, except this one will make it 180 degrees and then move the X position all the way over to about 640 to get a perfect tile over the whole image now. So now that we have the tile and all the harsh lines kind of erased out, we just have one simple thing to do is transform the size and the scale. So let's search for the transform effect now and click and drag this transform effect, which is in the distort folder, on this second and top adjustment layer that we made that we didn't have anything on yet. Next, you wanna make sure you uncheck the use compositions shutter angle box and then set a shutter angle yourself of anywhere from 180 to 360. That's just gonna give a little bit of motion blur to it. The stronger the shutter angle, the more motion blur. So I'll keep it around 300. And then let's click this stopwatch icon on the scale effect to toggle animation and keyframes. And it'll create a keyframe for you right at the start here. And you wanna begin at 300 scale. And what that'll do is it'll zoom all the way in to that first middle piece. So it looks like the normal clip again and then go all the way to the end or the last frame of this adjustment layer and then click on the scale and make it back to 100 so it reaches the normal size of clip B and going from point A to point B, it'll have a motion blur to it since we set that shutter angle. So let's play it back and see what it looks like. As you can see, it's pretty smooth. However, there's one more step we can take to give it a little bit more movement and feel. So under this scale keyframe, Click this drop down arrow and you should see a velocity section. And what you can do is either right click on these keyframes and do things like have the first one ease out and then have the second one ease in. 
and that'll create a different velocity of speed throughout the transition. Or you can manually pull these sliders and create different ramps and scales. Just be careful because if you take things past a certain point, you'll start to get some weird negative effects. So from here, you can copy these two adjustment layers either by pressing Command C and then pasting them over or by holding Alt or Option and click dragging them over to different cuts in your sections and cuts between different clips to duplicate the transition. And yes, you can save these different effects as a preset. You just kind of have to break it down. So what I would do is save one preset containing all the mirrors and replicate effects by right clicking, selecting all, and then saving as preset. That way I can always create a six frame long adjustment layer and slap that preset on there from my presets folder. And then I'd create another preset for the scale, transforming it from 300 to 100. And then just know that you're gonna have to create another adjustment layer and slap that on there but it'll save you some steps. I have a whole video tutorial on saving presets, so check that out, and a whole tutorial on how to do the zoom in effect or the re reverse of this. So if you guys like this video, definitely leave a like on it. Let me know what you thought in the comments below and subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for all new future videos. And follow me on social media at Justin OD Show on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that. If you wanna reach out to me, send me links or something like that. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.